All right, on today's video, I will show you how I draw shadows on the compositions. And I will link these images in the description of the video. So if you want to follow along and do exactly what I do, just check the link in the description and download these. These are PNG files, so you don't have to waste time on cutting them out. All right, let's use this image first. I got this hyena here. And what I will usually do is make a smart object so don't ruin the quality. And let's put this here. So this is a good image to use as an example. Now, first thing I would do here is create some sort of surface floor here. You can either do it with this and make this like gray so we can see the shadows and we see where this surface ends. So this is like the floor you will be walking on, for instance. All right. Now we need to create some shadows for this. So first we need to define where will the lighting be. So if I want my lighting on, let's say on the left side here, let me, let me make here a little dot, for instance, on my lighting on this side to be here. So I need to make sure the lighting comes from there. You can see this image has already light on the left side, so it will be the best way to also do this on this side. So I don't have to switch sides on the shadow on this hyena. So first thing I will do here is make sure my lighting will be there. And next thing I do is start with doing some dodge and burn here on this side. But I will not do that here because this video is about drawing shadows on the surface. So first thing I will do here is make a new layer. Now go to your brushes. And here you want to select general soft sound brush. You can see these brushes. You can just load these as standard Photoshop brushes. You all have these brushes. So I take the first soft round brush. Now, and here is the important part. You need to drop this opacity and flow really low. Usually what I do is between 10 and 20 and 30. So maybe like, like this, something like this is fine. Make sure you have black here selected. If you don't have like press D on your keyboard. So it goes to default. And now let's make this smaller. So first I would do is make this really small and start with a little shadow that's coming from here. So you can see here on this gray background, we can see this really good. So what I would do here is start with making these lines. Like this is where the shadow starts. This is the point where you want to be a little bit more visible than the end point. So this is for a start. This is OK. Now I will make a new layer here. And this time I'm going to increase the opacity and flow, let's say around 90. 80, 90. And if I go to here, I can change the shape of this brush. So I'd make it like this. Zoom in. And this is the part where we can even increase the hardness here. Let's say around 70%. And this is the part where something is touching the surface. So for this part, you want to make it like that. Just a black little line underneath it. Same goes for here. Assuming he's, it is touching here the floor maybe here so these are little details that you won't pretty much see but they do really matter so if you look before and after you can see this is where it touched the floor and let's drop this slide say around eight so this is fine for the shadow for this area where it touches now the next shadow that we need to create is i'll make another layer let's bring the shape back to normal again i'm just gonna make it like that and this i'm gonna drop the opacity and flow around 10 to 20 percent again and for this shadow i will make like a huge shadow on this side don't forget to drop the hardness again here because that's really important you want to have a soft shadow so for this shadow i will make like this area behind it a little bit darker like that just slightly not much this is fine now when you move too much of this press ctrl t and you can just make it a little bit like that now you can see this one doesn't really look so well. So what I usually do is when the shadow still doesn't look right, I just create a new layer and do this over until I get the shadow that I want. So I could start over here and try it again. So let's try this again and see how it looks. So the best way to just do this is make a couple of shadows to that pick the best one. So this is another one. So I have now two shadows, so I can compare these, which one is better. Let's make another one. Let's even drop the opacity lower here. 
and do another one. So usually behind the boss, you will need some shadows. All right, the only thing that looks weird here is because the surface is gray now and you won't have such a gray surface on a real composition. So let's do a little bit here. Just drop the opacity flow really low so you can do this a couple of times. All right, this is okay. And what I would do now is I can also duplicate this layer with Ctrl J and then press Ctrl U, Command U on Mac, make this black. Go to edit, transform and flip vertical. And now if I bring this down, put it behind it, like that and press ctrl t and hold down command this command to make not sure what it is on windows but stretch it out like that corners and bring it to that side like that so if your lighting is on that side we need to make sure these areas are right so this doesn't look right now so what i will do here is just press this away let's rasterize this layer because we can just this doesn't really matter and now i can just bring the hardness all the way up bring the opacity flow all the way up make sure these areas are touching this p this paw like that and also make this black all right this is fine all right so next thing i would do here is i need to blur this out this is way too too sharp so with the gaussian blur you can just blur it out or you can do this better with only blurring the end part. So for this, I could blur only the end part and leave the start part like sharp. So like that. So once you got that end part blurred out, next thing we'll do here is drop the opacity really low. Let's say around 10 or 20%, maybe a bit less. All right, this looks fine for this. And if you add a ground here or a surface, whatever it's called, you can see here, it looks right. It doesn't look weird anymore because you have like real ground. And here you can compare the shadows that you created and pick the best one. So try to do it a couple of times. I think this one is still the best. And after that, you can just make a new layer again and do some more shadowing. And always bring the hardness to like 10%, to 0% and the opacity and flow around 10%, maybe 20%. Something really low. So you could do a couple of times. Right, next thing you need to understand that because we have shadows here, we need to make sure this area where it touches the floor is also dark. So for this, I could create the clipping mask, new layer on top of it, and also make these areas darker here. Get it all right. So because it's a darker area, I'm going to make sure this is dark. And the same goes on the surface. Let's create a new layer and make this area a little bit darker. And now we can just drop the opacity and see how that looks. The best way to learn this is to, I think Photoshop is really easy to understand how to do things. The difficult part is to train your eye how to look at things. So but for instance, look at photographs and see how that looks. And try to accomplish the same. You can even stretch it out. This also looks pretty good. Now, if you want to make things really good, so you could also do shadowing here on this on this hyena. So for instance, I would make this dark first. After that, I would brush this part lighter. So I will bring up the flow and opacity again and get rid of it on this side. So make sure some, some things are lighter than the other things. So that's how I draw shadows. I, it all comes down to just practicing your eye instead of practicing Photoshop because Photoshop is really easy to understand. You don't have to know much for this. Just a brush and that's it. So try brushing a couple of times and see how that works out. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.